So she had this grace about her and she extended this grace even to the meanest people and she would still take care of them. And so I believe that she showed me how to take care of a variety of people. And that's why we call it Mary's Grace. Tell me a little bit about Mary's Grace. So Mary's Grace is an organization that um, my last year of Wake Forest, we either had to do um, CPE work, which is clinical pastoral education, being a chaplain in a hospital, or you had to do a project. And I was not going back into anybody's hospital after having premature twins and living there for five months. Um, I just mentally could not do that journey of being in a hospital every day. I wasn't ready for that. And so I had to do a project. And all of the work I had done sparked from a conversation in class, a conversation that made me so angry um, that I felt like I had to change the world. So one of my classmates who um, it was openly gay made the comment, um, are retarded people in the image of God? And usually I'm quiet in class, believe it or not. Um, and that day I had laryngitis, I had never, had laryngitis is bad. I couldn't get a whisper out. And uh, I told my professor, I can't talk, but I'm here. I'm not sick. My voice is just gone. Now I know why my voice was gone. Because that day, I won't tell him a whole piece of my mind. And <laughs> I would have lost all my juices <laughs> and said some things because he used the word retarded. And, and, and so I wrote on my paper and asked my professor, I'm like, read this. And it had some not so nice words on it. And, and I in essence, it said, if I can't call you this word, then you can't say retarded. And they didn't understand that. And so I had to start doing my work on language and why I was so offended by that. And so out of that journey, my professors were like, you need to do something with this. Nobody's writing about this. And so I started putting together a um, program for churches that um, United Metropolitan started to implement when I was there. They have a notebook of all these uh, programs and ways to change ministry. And so I thought about at the end of this, what am I going to do with this? And um, my, one of my favorite professors said, start a business. This is your business. And I did. And I named it Mary's Grace after my maternal grandmother, Mary Stanfield, who took care of every single person she encountered. Um, my grandmother would cook for people who uh, had a, a sick loved one and I would get in the car and she'd go deliver it. Uh, she took care of her sister-in-law and I hate to say it, she was absolutely mean, um, but my grandmother saw the pureness of a person, no matter what their ability was. She took in foster kids um, when her children were grown. And so she did all these things and no matter who was at her table, you had to show them respect. No matter whose home we went to or uh, what places we went to, she made me respect everyone I came in contact with. So she had this grace about her and she extended this grace even to the meanest people and she would still take care of them. And so I believe that she showed me how to take care of a variety of people and that's why we call it Mary's Grace. All right. Wow. So you uh, passed her. You have several degrees, <laughs> and the whole time you have been a full-time uh, employee, most recently at Family Abuse Services. So please tell me about um, that experience. Sure. So actually a friend um, posted the position and I was like, oh, that sounds like what I already do. Um, and so I applied. It, they said they were looking for a business minded person who has a passion for people and justice. And, and so I applied and, and was chosen and um, got to the job. We're like, this is not what I signed up for. Uh, so it was more business minded than anything else. But that's where the business minor comes into play. Um, so we are the organization in Alamance County that serves uh, victims of domestic violence, um, victims of human trafficking. We work with all kinds of people. We partner with another agency that specializes in sexual assault and human trafficking, but we're the one that provides shelter as well. If you've ever heard of someone saying, I need a protective order or what's called a 50 being, we're the only place you can get one in Alamance County. You come through my staff and they, I have a team of advocates that work uh, every day 
uh, to help people stay safe and uh, find safe places. We have a 21 bed shelter and we have four units of apartments. And right now we just received close to $500,000 to address the issues of homelessness in our community. And not just in, per, in Alamance County, uh, this $500,000 actually impacts Roxborough. And so we're included in this region called PRAC by the balance of state, this uh, um, uh, the state level organization that kind of looks at uh, homelessness. And we will now cover Person, Rockingham, Alamance, Caswell, and Chatham County and helping to reduce homelessness. And it all comes through my office. Um, I am the region lead for those counties. So for me, it is not just about Alamance County. It's about giving back to the two counties that you know raised me, Caswell County and Percy County. And where I live now is Alamance County. So uh, we're gonna be able to make a huge impact in homelessness and those who are about to be evicted. Um, you know, it's about us giving to people who are at their bottom and even there, uh, every day we have a staff meeting at 8.30 in the morning on Zoom. Number one, so I make sure they're up and ready to go to work. <laughs> Number two, it's the time for us to check in before I day get started. And they know that because I, I jokingly say, okay, are you dressed? Um, and their cameras have to be on so I can see them. And the last thing we say when everybody's finished, they all pause. And I say, are you ready? And they just look at me like I'm crazy. And, and, they, and most of the time they'll nod. And I say, be the hope. Be the hope somebody needs today because you may be that glimmer of hope that they're holding on for. You may be a lifesaver today. You may be the person that gets that person out of a 20 year abusive marriage. You may be the person that finds them shelter from a storm. You may be the person that brings a smile to their face. You may be the person that really changes their life. So be the hope today. So no matter where I go, um, I, I think hope is my language. And um, I call them my hope dealers every day. Um, and they laugh. And now if I don't say it, they're like, are we going to be hope today? <laughs> so every day, be the hope. Be the hope somebody needs. Um, because that's what we're called to do. I can't preach to them because it's not a, a Christian or a faith-based organization. But everyone can provide people hope. And we're living in a world that doesn't have much hope. And if we choose every single day of our lives to get up and show hope, I think we can change the world. And that's the, where I am now. I'm, I'm challenging our church virtually and uh, those who are with us on conference call lives, wherever we are, come journey with me and help me change the world. <laughs>